two and five slide the last seven games. The Rams seem the right medicine, losers of seven of their last eight, a team the Saints had beaten 37 to six in week number five. There was joy in the Superdome early as Sam Mills stripped Jerome Bettis and scored the game's first touchdown. But things broke down once again. Bettis ran over the Saints for 212 yards. Lester blocking for Bettis to get the opening on the outside. And there he goes. He's got a first down and may outrace everyone. He will. Bettis is going to go all the way for a touchdown. 71 big yards for Big Daddy. The Rams took advantage of three Saints turnovers and took a 23-13 lead. The Saints pulled within three on Dalton Hilliard's fourth quarter touchdown run. But a final drive ended on the Rams 43 with a fourth down pass from Wade Wilson to Eric Martin falling incomplete. The Saints lose 23-20 and fall to 7-6 on the year. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jim Moore Show. Thank you very much. We want to welcome our friends from LGS here tonight. They've been with us as advertisers and sponsors for four years. Thanks for coming out tonight, guys. The bad news is the Saints have lost six of their last eight. The good news is the Saints still have a winning record, and they're very much in the hunt for a wild-card playoff berth. We'll talk about what happened against the Rams and also the outlook for the last three games of the season. Let's start off, as we always do, by bringing out the head coach of the Saints, Jim Mora. Hello, Jim. How are you doing? Jim, uh, the Rams, a team that you guys beat 37-6 to in Anaheim, they came in and turned it around in the Superdome on Sunday. Sure did. That happens. You know, we, uh, we didn't play very well, and uh, they played pretty well, and they won. They deserved to win. They beat us. Jim, the media and the fans have said that sometimes uh, you don't seem emotional or upset after a Saints loss. Uh, now, at your press briefing today, we saw some of the videotape. You said that what we see is not necessarily what you are feeling. Is that true? Well, I, I don't know. The fans say I don't seem upset after a loss. How do they see me after a loss? They don't see me after a loss. I go into the locker room. I talk to the team. There's no fans in there. I go take a shower. There's no fans in there. I know that. <laughs> I get in my car and I go home and there's no fans in my car and there's no fans at home. So how do right. they know how I am after a game? I guess that was your entire point is they, they, we don't know exactly what you're feeling. Well, they don't know what I'm feeling or what I tell the team or how the, you know, they, they don't, they don't see they, they see uh, a game, they see news, uh, you know, press conferences, but, but how I am in a press conference isn't necessarily how I feel or what I say to the team or uh, right. what we do in meetings and all those kind of things. That happens within our little building. So uh, just, just because I may seem a certain way or our players do or coaches in, in a press conference, it isn't necessarily how we are when we're together as a team and as coaches. Right. Now, we'll see the Saints-Rams action in a minute, but Jerome Bettis got 212 yards. A lot of times, Saints defenders were there, but didn't make the tackle. Uh, is the tackling a concern for you right now? It was yesterday. It's not right this minute, because uh, I think we'll tackle better uh, next Sunday. We, we've got to, because we're playing a team that runs the ball a lot better than the Rams do. Uh, but uh, we didn't tackle as well as we needed to tackle Sunday to get the job done on, on Bettis. We'll talk about that Giants game coming up in a few minutes. We'll take our first break now, but come back. We're just getting started. We'll break down the Rams game right after this. Coming up, the coach reveals the turning point and hear the other side's opinion of our New Orleans Saints. Back on the show, and the Saints-Rams game had a lot of ups and downs, and we'll look at them right now. Jim, the first half breakdown, uh, right off the bat, the Saints defense made something happen. Ricky Jackson and uh, James Williams got to Jerome Bettis. No, it was uh, James Williams and Sam, you mean oh, Sam, sorry, Mills? Sam Mills? Yeah, yeah Sam, Sam Mills, Mills. was the, Rick, uh, James, and then Sam got it and right. took it in for a touchdown, right? Good that, play. Yeah, that made the score 7-0. Then with the score 7-3, Bettis uh, broke off a 71-yard touchdown run to make it 10-7. Right. Did a little toss play to, our, to his right, and 
they got some good blocks on our people. We got some people walled off. We missed a couple tackles, and he breaks in the clear, and we couldn't catch him. And then the score was 10 to 10 later, and the Saints started driving. Uh, Wade Wilson to Irv Smith for 21 yards. All right, a little bootleg action here. Hit Irv on a crossing route. Irv made a nice catch. That's it. The Saints got a field goal. Morton Anderson made it uh, 32 yards. Here it comes, and it was 13-10 at the half. Uh, Jim, twice in the first half you got close to the goal, once a first and goal at the six, but only got two field goals out of it. Is that something you need to improve on the next three games? Obviously, right. We'd like to get touchdowns down there, so we, we think we need to work on it and, and get better at it. All right, that first and goal situation, the Saints uh, ran the ball three times. They didn't get in. Did you feel that was something you could do, attack the Rams on the ground without passing the ball down there? Yes, we did. We felt like that would be the best way to, uh, to get into the end zone. All right, let's get to the second half now. It began with the Rams kicking to the Saints, and uh, this was a crucial play here, the kick to Fred McAfee, and uh, he stripped to the ball and fumbles. All right, this is the opening kickoff of the second half, and it's not a good way to start the second half, not a good way to start anything, but uh, he fumbled the ball, and their guy picked it up and ran it in. Darrell Boykin got a touchdown for the Rams. It was 17-13. The Rams later scored again. T.J. Rubley, who only passed for 47 yards, hit Pat Carter with the touchdown here. That made it 23-13. All right, this was... See, they scored that touchdown at the kickoff, and then and we had a drive that didn't do much, and then they had a drive here, a long drive, that, that, that ate up some clock time, and then they went down and scored, and that put them up 23-13. Uh, Fourth quarter, Wilson to Eric Martin here for 21 yards as you start a drive here. Right. We, we moved the ball on them. We just couldn't get in the end zone. You know, we just we didn't have great field position as far as starting our drives. We always were, you know, had a long way yeah. to go. We never could quite make it. Sets up a touchdown, though. Dalton Hilliard runs it in from two yards out. Yeah, this was a great run by Dalton. You know, he, uh, he changed direction and started inside and came outside. And I think it was an outstanding effort on his part. It was 23-20. Saints had it back late in the game, Jim. But at fourth and four here, Wilson and Martin is incomplete. And the Rams won at 23 to 20. All right, that's fourth down play. They had double coverage on Eric, and uh, they uh, outdefended us there. Now, at that time, Jim, you were at the Rams' 43-yard line. It was fourth down. I think it would have made it been a 60-yard try for Morton Anderson. Uh, what was your feeling not giving him the shot? Just thought you could probably get the first down. Yes, we felt like this was the best opportunity for us to uh, to get the net. Get you know, we had a better chance to pick up fourth and four than and and continue to keep the ball and go down and, and either get a field goal to tie it or a touchdown to win it rather than take the shot at him with 60 yards. All right, and now the turning point of the game, you said you thought it came in the third quarter. Well, I thought that, you know, to find one particular play or a turning point in this game is, is kind of hard to do. You know, I, I felt like, though, the, the thing that hurt us was their third down, their third quarter drive for a touchdown. It's 13 to 17 and them and and but then they get the ball and and drive right down the field just kind of mashed us mashed us mashed us then ran the bootleg here for the touchdown to carter and that put them up another six, well, six points they missed extra point and i felt like that that hurt right there that drive and the rams left new orleans with a win only their fourth of the season let's now check in on the other side and hear what they had to say about the game year I, I think their defense was really making a lot of big plays they're still making a uh, good play good play and they're they're playing hard but uh i think there's kind of something like us that uh things just aren't kind of going their way and so uh but i'm sure they'll, they'll be down the stretch they'll be tough we rushed pretty well against them uh the first meeting that we had and uh we knew that we can come in here and get some significant uh yards from the ground but uh a, a 200 yard day i really didn't think they're an outstanding defense they're an outstanding football team they're a little banged up uh, you know, they lost from all the Turnbull today. Uh, from what I understand, Sam Mills has been a little banged up. So, um, and whenever you have injuries, you're not playing to 100% efficiency. And, and uh, they're an outstanding football team. They really are, and they're going to execute better and better. And, and uh, we were just very fortunate to come away with a win today. Sometimes people uh, tend to live off the reputation a little bit. You know, you hear somebody's got a good defense against a run, against a pass. Then people just automatically say, well, we can't do that. We can't run. You know, hey, they don't let people gain 100 yards. They don't let people do this. And sometimes people just back off the game plan and kind of get, uh, I guess, scared out of the game plan. And so, like I said, we were resolved to come down here and, and run the ball, period. And if we didn't win with it, we didn't win with it. But we were, you know, we were going to give it our best shot. Time for another break right now. But right around the corner, we'll go out to the Grand Casino and also check in with Saints wide receivers coach Steve Walters, the coach's handbook, and a lot more coming up next. When we return, we'll visit fans in the stands as the Jim Morris Show presents Hey Coach. It's 
Time to find out what's going on at the Grand. We head out to the Grand Casino in Gulfport, Mississippi, where Ron Svoboda has Saints fans with questions for Coach Jim Moore. Ron? Well, I know, Jim, these aren't, these aren't fans. These are all football coaches. We brought them in specially so we could help solve all the problems. And uh, we got some questions here first. Your name and your question. Uh, Cameron Cardinal from Gulfport, Mississippi. Coach, um, from a coaching standpoint, has this been the worst situation you've been in since your tenure at the Saints? And if not, when has that been? Well, we've had our ups and downs here, uh, as all coaches do. Uh, we've had some times where we, we started out one year, one and four. Uh, uh, we lost four in a row. I, I remember in 91 uh, at the end of the season. Uh, another year we, we struggled early and in, in, in 88 or 90 was a rough year. You know, we, we never did even reach 500 till the last game of the season, but still made the playoffs. We were six and eight uh, going into our last two games. So, you know, there's been th this this business is full of highs and it's and you, and you kind of got an equal number of lows and, and they, you know, you're either feeling great or feeling down. And uh, but this has been a tough stretch, but we've had other tough stretches and we've worked through it. Okay, thank you, Coach. Your uh, name and your question. Uh, Coach, my name is Earl Lingo from Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. After that 71-yard run by Bennett and uh, Turnbull pulled a muscle, how much did that hurt without having him and uh, Von Johnson in the game? Well, uh, you know, when you don't have two of your starters, it always has an effect on your defense. I, I really feel like James Williams is, is playing well for us. He, he played for Sam a lot when Sam was playing and then and now he played yesterday for uh, uh, Vaughn and I think he's a fine football player so I don't think that was a big difference. Uh, uh, Ronaldo, uh, we miss Ronaldo. Uh, you know I'm not sure that he would have made a, a major difference in the running game but uh, when you don't have your best football players you're not quite as good. Hey coach I, I, I've got a guy here I think uh, he thinks he can solve some of your problems at wide receiver if indeed you think you have any. You might remember him. This is Fernando Evans out of Alcorn State. Of course, was in camp with you guys. How you, how you doing, Coach? Fine, Fernando. How uh, you doing? You going to invite me back to camp uh, in February? I don't know yet, Fernando. Well, you know, on the series, Jeff, Coach, uh, about being on the outside looking in, you hear all these things about uh, you need to change quarterback and make certain changes. You know, I really don't buy that. Uh, my biggest concern, Coach, is what happened to the emotion and uh, all the enthusiasm. We're not playing like a playoff team or a playoff contender. Well, Fernando, uh, that's a good question, and uh, we're looking for the answers. Uh, um, I know that everybody out there uh, has the answers, but uh, uh, we're the ones that have to find them, so uh, we're searching hard, and we'll find them. Okay, Coach. Well, that'll do it for now from the Grand Casino. We will be back, though, with more second guesses from the Grand Casino. All right. We'll see you then, Ron. Now, our cameras were out this weekend at the Superdome in the stands getting questions from some uh, fans. We call it, Hey Coach, and let's hear our first question now. Hey Coach, has anything changed with the coaching staff from the beginning of the year till today? No, not at all. All right, let's get to... That's uh, it. <laughs> that's the answer. That's it. All right, let's get uh, to our second question now. Hey, Coach, is Joe Marciano as good a coach as he is a bass fisherman? He's a better coach. <laughs> he'll, he'll say that he's a very good fisherman. Though. He is. That but tells you what coach. kind of coach he is. You're right. Uh -huh. He's a great one in both uh, sides. Outstanding. All right, our last question on Hey, Coach, now. Hey, Coach, do you plan on making any changes of the offense for the rest of the season? Thomas, we're just trying to score more touchdowns. That's what we're trying to do. That's the hope hopefully we, make, we can make those changes, get in the end zone more often. Once again, we do coach's handbook now, Jim. That's where Saints assistant coaches explain football terminology and show us exactly what happens on certain plays. Tonight, uh, the coach's handbook host, Brian Grenrude, talks with Saints receivers coach, Steve Walters. When you talk about wide receivers, you talk about routes and patterns. A route is what one wide receiver runs on a certain play, while a pattern is a combination of routes. This week on Coach's Handbook, we're going to talk about the crossing route with wide receivers coach Steve Walters. All right, Coach, well, explain to me exactly what is a crossing route. Brian, a crossing route is a route where the receiver starts on one side of the field and crosses to the other side. Uh, there's an example here on the film. Uh, the slot receiver here is going to run what we call an under, which is a crossing route. He starts on the left side of the field, 
and he crosses over to the right side of the field. A crossing route, that's one type of a crossing route. There are several different depths you can run these at, but this is an example of a crossing route. Uh, if those receivers are closer together, can you use that as a pick on a defensive back? Uh, you can't legally pick a defender with an offensive player. If the two defenders happen to run together, or if it's an unintentional type thing, which happens at times, and basically that's a judgment called by the officials, but if the official believes that you intended to pick the defender, it would be called, it would be a penalty. All right, Coach, well, thank you. Bye. For Coach's Handbook, I'm Brian Grenry. Coach, uh, some of your assistant coaches have uh, sons that uh, are playing football, so I know uh, Coach Walter's son plays for John Curtis. I think Jim Skipper's son uh, plays for, is it Bonneville? Bonneville, yeah. Yeah, these guys uh, can look for in the future, maybe. You bet. You bet. If they're as good as their dads, they'll be something special. All right, we'll see uh, what happens on that. Time found for another break, but don't go away. We'll visit with player guest Brad Muster. That and more when we come back. Coming up next on the Jim Mora Show. We'll introduce you to the Saints' other broadcasting team. We'll explain next. Saints running back Brad Muster had his best day in a black and gold uniform Sunday against the Rams. He was the Saints' leading rusher, running the ball 13 times for 53 yards, and he caught four passes for 31 yards. And that means our player guest tonight is number 22, Brad Muster. <laughs> Brad, first off, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks Thank you. for coming down. Uh, Thanks, my pleasure. How was it Sunday against the Rams? You had your uh, most productive day as a Saint. Must have felt good individually for you out there. Well, yeah, you know, it was the first time I really got some extensive playing time in, in the offense. You know, I've been uh, looking forward to that uh, from day one. Uh, unfortunately, I got hurt early in the season, and uh, you know, I was a little uh, relieved that you know I finally got a chance to go out there and, and show what I could do. Right now, coming out of training camp, I know a lot of people uh, there. The media were looking at you, thinking you'd be a very big part of the offense, making a big impact. And then, as you said, you were injured in the preseason. Are you back to 100% healthy now? Yeah, for sure. You know, I felt real good out there. I felt good for the last couple of weeks, and. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of uh, all of us getting together and starting to hone in on the offense, get everybody on the same page, and uh, we'll, we'll start winning games. Now, obviously, we're going on Sunday's game against the Rams, uh, but you are a big part of that offense. Uh, is it because you're healthy now, or, or as you said, you got a chance and you went out there and made things happen when you got that chance? Um, maybe it's a combination of both. You know, I, I felt I've been healthy for the last five, six weeks or whatever, yeah. but, uh, you know, this was the first time I really got to, to handle the football in an extensive manner. And uh, I wanted to go out there and, and, and play well. You know, I do that every week. Right. Uh, I didn't really know I'd get the ball that many times this week, but uh, fortunately, you know, I was ready. Yeah, as a player, I guess that's the problem. When you've got, you know, three, four running backs, it's, it's hard to keep uh, everybody, I guess, happy. And, and in the offense, you want to kind of spread it around. Is that, is that the feeling? Right. We got a lot of good running backs, a lot of good players. And, uh, you know, you like to put your best players on the field. But, you know, I happen to think I'm one of the best players on the team, and I feel I should be out there a lot. As each week goes by now, uh, with three games left, do you feel, Brad, uh, more aware of the impending end of the season? Is it now, like, really now or next year concerning the playoffs? No. Yeah, I, I can't speak for the other players, but for me, it's uh, you look at your goal, and your goal is the uh, upcoming game of the week. And you, if you start worrying about uh, what we have to do, how many games we have to win, who has to lose in order for us to make the playoffs, you're, you're out of the boat already. So. Uh, you just approach it each week and find out who your opponent is the next week and, and take it from there one game at a time. Brad, when you were with the Bears and the team lost, was it a similar reaction, I guess, from the fans and the media? Was it like when the Bears lost, maybe opposed to the Saints going on here? Was there any similarities or what was it like in Chicago? Well, sure. You know, nobody likes to lose. And uh, if, you're, if you're a fan, you don't like to see your team lose. But uh, I think people got to realize the people that uh, feel worse about a Saints loss are the Saints and everybody in the organization. So. You know, we're trying everything that we can to, to be a better team and to win football games. And, uh, you know, we're sorry the fans feel bad, but we feel a lot worse. Right. As a couple of your cohorts in the offensive backfield, uh, Lorenzo Neal is out, uh, Derek Brown was out. That had to hurt a little bit on Sunday, too. Sure. You, you miss uh, players of that caliber. Uh, they're not uh, out there performing for you. It's, it's going to show up. But, uh, like I said, we have a lot of good players, a lot of good running backs. Uh, and, uh, you know, we got 
people to fill in and, and do the job. So, uh, you know, you can't blame uh, your frustrations and your losses on people that didn't play. You got to worry about who's playing and who's getting the job done. Brad, fortunately, we'll be back to you with more questions a little bit later in the show. For being our player guest tonight, he'll receive a gift certificate from Oakland Heart Jewelers on Metairie Road. Ahora este tiempo para la foto de Santos. That is Spanish for now it's time for the Saints snapshot. And this week, uh, Jim Gallagher profiles the Saints team, radio team, one that doesn't broadcast in English. Every NFL team has its own radio network, but only a handful have both English and Spanish broadcasts available. Meet Juan Luis Botania and Eric Premal, the broadcast team for KGLA 1540, the Spanish radio home of the New Orleans Saints. And the most important thing is, is having a chance to bring these games to the, the Spanish-speaking community. Yes, and thanks to the New Orleans Saints who really want to make the Spanish community a part of the biggest game in town, which is the New Orleans Saints. Now we have the opportunity to involve thousands of people that feel more comfortable with the Spanish language. And there are hundreds of them that I find every week that I turn off the volume on the TV set and listen to us. So it's a big responsibility, but there's something beautiful to be able to involve something that I've been loving for so long, which is the New Orleans Saints, to my people in the Spanish. Analyst Primo is actually from Quebec, and Spanish is his third language. Eric, Spanish is not the only language you speak, though, is it? Well, actually, I'm fluent in seven languages, French, English, Spanish, Italian, German, Russian, and Portuguese. Do you find yourself, like, sometimes slipping into the other languages? <laughs> sometimes it's interesting, uh, between Italian or uh, Portuguese, uh, languages that are very close, uh, it's pretty hard to uh, concentrate on each. It's like if you have different uh, software packages in your brain, then you switch from one to another, press enter, and it works. This is the second year of the Spanish language broadcasts, and the response has been very positive. Touchdowns in an NFL game are always exciting, especially here in the Louisiana Superdome. But you haven't lived until you've heard it called in Spanish. In the number 88, the man in movement, one more time, he'll give the corner. This time, he's received by the man who throws the ball to Salmins. Cut the yard, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown! Let's see. Let's see. Whatever the Saints outcome on Sunday, there are thousands of fans who are winners every week. That's because they get to experience the game in their native tongue. In my opinion, it's more for sports language because you can make it sound faster and more exciting. Even if the game is not, you can really make people think that something nice is happening. And you won't be lying, you will just be speaking Spanish. For the Jim Mora Show, I'm Jim Gallagher. That's great. Uh, Jim, Brad, do you guys speak any uh, foreign languages at all? I don't. No? No, I took Spanish, but I can't speak a lick of it. Same, same yeah. here. <laughs> Did you understand what he was saying there in the Sam Mills touchdown? No, oh, if he wrote it down, I could probably decipher it a little easier. Than I picked up touchdown from the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's great that they uh, can bring that to the Spanish community. All right, we'll go away again, but up next, back out to the Grand Casino, and also we'll get more questions from the studio audience this time, so stick around. Coming up next when we on the Jim back, Mora Show. Ron and guests talk to the coach from the Grand Casino in Gulfport. Welcome back to the show. We are going away again to the Grand Casino in Gulfport where Ron Swoboda is back with more Saints fans and their question for Jim Moore. Ron, what do we have? I told you, Lionel, these are football coaches. Right. <laughs> At least we all think we are anyway. Your name and your question. Scott Stevenson from Gulfport, Mississippi. Coach Jim Finks was such an important part of the team for so many years. Do you think it's important to hire another general manager? Well, that's not my decision to make, Scott, but uh, I'm sure uh, Tom Benson is, uh, is, is thinking, thinking about that, and, and he'll weigh all the options and make the right decision. And uh, you know, whatever he does, it'll be the right one, I'm sure of that. Okay. Your name and your question. Yeah, Coach, this is Scott Tucker from Gulfport. It seems like the uh, Saints tackling technique emphasizes stripping the ball. I'm wondering if we're going for the ball too much and we're missing some tackles and if it's costing us in the long run. I don't think so. Uh, mainly what we tell our guys is the first guy, you make sure you, you make the tackle, and then if you're a, a second or third or fourth tackler that's coming in and the ball carrier is hung up there and, and, the, and it's still live, to go for the ball. But uh, we never sacrifice making the tackle for getting the ball. Yeah, uh, Coach, Derek Brown uh, practiced all week, but uh, you didn't play him at running back. 
Uh, was he close to being able to play? Who made that decision? Did he think he could play? I made the decision after talking to our trainer and to Derek. Uh, Derek didn't feel like he was 100% and uh, wasn't going to be at his best, and I didn't feel that if he wasn't at his best that uh, we wouldn't put him in the game anyway, that we had other guys that would do better. And so we, I made the decision not to play him. Yeah. Coach, we go out to practice every week and see J.J. McCluskey show in speed. Is there any chance we're going to see him active this year at wide receiver? You never know. Uh, it's, at, at this point, no, but uh, something may happen to one of our guys, and we might move J.J. up. So, uh, but at this point right now, uh, we don't have any plans to activate him. Yeah, without an injury, then, he wouldn't play? Probably not. Okay. Thank you, Coach. That's uh, it for this segment from the Grand Casino. All right, Ron. We'll see you a little bit later. Yeah. Now let's hear from the fans here in the studio. It's the Michael A. Bear armchair quarterback segment. Let's get right to the first question now. Hi, uh, Coach. Robert from uh, Lakeview. I wanted to know how you felt about uh, the fans' negativity. Do you get tired of hearing it? Do you feel it's justified? I don't, I don't like it. Uh, you know, I, I don't think I'd be normal to say I, if I liked it. I don't like it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, but fans are, you know, they, they're, they're with you when you win and against you when you lose. So they're like all fans, and, but I don't think that's right. Hi, Coach. It's Angela from New Orleans. Uh, could Wade Wilson be burned out? No, I don't think so. I'm not quite sure what you mean, but uh, I don't know if you mean tired or, or whatever. I, I don't know, but I don't think he's burned out. No, not at all. Hi, Coach and Brad. I'm Richard Golden from New Orleans, and this is my son, Devin. And it's a question for Brad. Brad, it seems like the Saints players are playing a little bit without emotion. Do you think that they need to play with, em with more emotion? And if so, how, what can provide that kind of spark for the players? Well, everybody plays with their own emotion, whether it's uh, visible or inside themselves. Um, you know, I don't think we have a lot of guys that are going to go up and jump up and down after a big play. That's just the makeup of our team and the makeup of the individuals on the team. Um, but, you know, maybe we, we could use a little more emotion. But, you know, I'm out there with those guys, and I see the fire in their eyes. And, uh, you know, we're all trying to do our best. And, uh, you know, just a matter, at, you know, when you win, nobody talks about the, the lack of emotion. So, you know, a win will cure everything. Uh, Coach Gene Smith from Lakeview. Uh, to what extent has Tom Benson become more active in the daily uh, operation of the team? Has he been attending practices, team meetings, uh, anything like that? Tom uh, has become more involved in the daily operations of the team because he now is the president of the New Orleans Saints, and, and he's doing an outstanding job. Uh, Tom uh, comes to practices, but he always has come to practices. So he, but, he, but I don't see him out there at practices any more than, than he's ever come, and, and he'll come a couple times a week when he's in town. Uh, so he's, he's, uh, he doesn't come to the meetings, no. But, but he and I talk uh, on a regular basis, as we, as we always have. Hi, I'm, S I'm Stephen Hotard from New Orleans. Why don't the Saints pass more on the first down? Why don't we pass more? Yeah. Well, uh, we pass a, a good deal on, for, on first down, and I, I think if we did it, did it more, then we might lose our element of surprise. But uh, I think if you looked at the statistics, and I'm not sure exactly what they are just offhand, but we, uh, we have a pretty good uh, ratio of passing on first down. All right, that's all the time we have. Thanks a lot, audience, for the questions tonight. Now let's give away a new bench craft recliner from Michael A. Bear's Furniture. Uh, we'll let Brad Muster do the honors. Brad, uh, oh, pick a name out of there and on. read the question on it. All right. All right. This, person. this is from uh, Devin Golden, and it's for Coach. Uh, to what extent is the coaching staff able to make adjustments to the game plan at halftime? For instance, did the Saints attempt to crowd the line of scrimmage after the Rams' first half success at running the, the football. Uh, yeah, if you noticed, uh, if you noticed our second half uh, defensive uh, adjustments, we we at at various times later in the game, we had 11 guys up within two or three yards of the line of scrimmage, and you know what? We still had trouble getting them stopped. I think the first time we had 11 guys all up there close to him, he chunked, he ran a, a yard for a, a run for about 22 yards, and so. You know, we just it, did, it wasn't working yesterday. We we tried it all. I guarantee you, we tried everything we knew to stop that big sucker, and uh, we couldn't get it done. <laughs> Devin, congratulations on your new bench crap recliner. I think your dad will be in. <laughs> <laughs> For Michael A. Bear's furniture. Make sure he lets you sit in it, Devin. Sometimes it's a comfortable chair. We'll take another break right now, but don't touch that dial. We'll catch up with a former All-Pro NFL player, a U.S. Senator, and a local music man. What do they have in common? We'll explain coming up next.
Coming up next on the Jim Mora Show, we'll hear from Giants head coach Dan Reeves. He's next. Welcome back to the show. Every week we interview a cornucopia of celebrities on What I Say. From rock stars, we've talked to Pearl Jam, sports stars, and politicians now. This week we've got another interesting mix. Here's Jim Gallagher. Ellis Marcellus is the patriarch of one of the city's most famous musical families. His sons Branford, Winton, and Del Feo have all achieved national recognition for their music. But the Marcellus family is also a big sports family and longtime season ticket holders. I think that there may be some decisions being made considering that there's an upcoming salary cap. Obviously, we do have some problems at the quarterback position. But there are lots of things that need to be changed. And uh, the Saints, is, in some ways, is like the Mississippi River. They just keep rolling along. Louisiana's senior U.S. Senator Jay Bennett Johnston was also in town last week for a series of events. We caught up with him at the Jazz Park hearing. No surprise to learn that the senator is a big Saints fan. I think they had particularly uh, you know, a disappointing game last weekend, and I think they're going to beat the Jinx this year and win a playoff game. So you're optimistic despite all the I'm optimistic. I love the Saints. Jack Snow is an all-pro receiver for the Los Angeles Rams, and he's now the team's radio analyst. While the Rams may be out of the playoff hunt, he feels the Saints are a definite playoff contender. You look at Buffalo, they went to the Super Bowl three consecutive years. They lost all three. Everybody's downing them, but hey, they were there. They were there three consecutive years. You get into the playoffs, a lot of things have got to happen. You've got to be free of injury. You've got to get some breaks, and if you can if you can have those couple of things happen, you'll make it to the next level. I like Jim Mora. You know, look what he's done for this franchise. You're in and you're out. They're right up there. They're battling. They're getting into the playoffs, and you know, for the longest time, the Saints fans, uh, they were accustomed to non-winning and, and not winning at all, and I think he's brought this franchise into some respectability, and, and you're always looking to improve. You need a little more speed here, a little more speed there, but I think in the long haul, look what he's done. Jim, you hear a lot of people talking, uh, looking forward to the playoffs. Uh, I see you shaking your head. That's not a part of this team, obviously. No, I, yeah, I don't think you, I don't think you can even think about the playoffs till you get to the playoffs. I mean, what can you do to prepare for the playoffs now? Nothing. We got to get worried about the Rams. I mean, the Rams. We, we, yeah, we better not worry about them. <laughs> we better worry about the Giants. And 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 then when you get to the playoff, then you worry about the playoff. Then you won't worry about winning a playoff game. You don't worry about them now. You worry about because if we don't get there, it wouldn't make any difference anyway. Why think why think down the road that far? You worry about like Brad said earlier. You worry about that next opponent because that's the only one you have any control over, and that that's that's the thing you zero in on. That's your target. And uh, the heck with down the road because if you win, if you, we win this week, then we go on to the next one. We win, and that takes care of itself. What happens down the road? That's right. You got to take them. That's always time. been. That's always been our philosophy. It's always been our philosophy. All right. Too much talk about playoffs. We'll talk Giants coming up in a few minutes. But let's take this time now to announce our Saints away tailgate party. The lucky winners in this contest get to watch the Saints Giants game in person. Tickets to the game. It's part of our contest sponsored by WVUE Sports, your local Dodge dealers, and Saints Digest. The following winners get those tickets to the game. They are Sherwood Trail. Sherwood Taylor of Ponchatoula, Louisiana, Bobby Shelby of Mandeville, LaShonda Brooks of Roseland, and Rhonda St. Emmett of Gretna, Louisiana. Winning in this contest is simple. All you have to do is go to any Dodge dealer in the New Orleans area, drop your name in the basket, and you're registered. At the end of the year, we'll award the grand prize, a brand new Dodge Ram truck. Now, the Saints' next game is another Monday night affair. This one at home in the Dome against the New York Giants. Here's what the Giants did on Sunday against the Indianapolis Colts and a few comments from Giants head coach Dan Reeves. The New York Giants used a strong ground attack to batter the Colts. Rodney Hampton was a leader. He rushed for 173 yards and one touchdown. Jared Bunch also scored on the ground. The Giants rushed for 205 total yards, and that made it easy for quarterback Phil Simms. He didn't need to do much. He passed for only 85 yards, but did throw this touchdown pass to Chris Calloway, and the Giants win it 20-6. They're the first team to clinch a playoff berth. 
Head coach Dan Reeves says even though the Giants are in it, there's still a lot of incentive to win their last three games. And I think that's one of the reasons the league did this several years ago is that if you all of a sudden clinch a playoff berth and you don't have anything to play for, you may go through the motions over the next three weeks. We have something to play for now, and that's to try to continue to win our division, but also trying to, uh, you know, obtain home field advantage also. Reeves says playing the Saints on Monday night, then turning around and going to Phoenix the next Sunday is rough, especially right smack dab in the middle of the holiday season. Every year around this time, if you're still in the, you know, the playoff picture, uh, you know, it's kind of hectic. Trying to handle the holidays, trying to handle the, uh, the travel if you do have that. This is just unusual. They usually don't make you play a Monday night game and then travel the following week and then throw Christmas in is that, that week that you're doing all that on. Uh, so, you know, it is hectic, but, uh, you know, we just got to, we got to, we got to handle it. Uh, we got three tough games coming up. We're getting ready and focusing in on New Orleans. We talked a little about the running game, Jim, but their defense, no slouches either. Well, they've got statistically, I mean, they're 10 and 3. They've clinched the first team to clinch a playoff spot. And they're an outstanding football team. They, you know, statistically, they're one of the top defenses in the NFL. They got the number one running game in the NFL. Now, last week, I told the team this today, we played the Rams last week. When they, they came in with the 17th statistically best running game in the NFL. This week, we're going against the number one running team in the NFL. And, you know, you saw what the Rams did to right. us. So, you know, we got our work cut out for us defensively, offensively, too, because they have a great defense. But uh, they're a fine football team. But uh, I believe our guys are going to play well Monday night, really well. Brad, this is another Monday night affair, and obviously a lot, you know, you talk to players around the league, playing on Monday night football is a little bit different. Uh, and now three games left in the season. Uh, a sense of urgency going into this game. What do you think the Dome will be like there on Monday night? Oh, there's no doubt about it, a sense of urgency. We need a win and uh, to get back on the winning track. Um, I think the Dome will be uh, a great place to be. I mean, we got good fans, and uh, they'll support us. And uh, whether or not they come out at all, we're going to play that game, and we're going to give it our best shot. All right, I got a feeling, though, it'll be packed for sure. For every home game, we announce our Hibernia Junior Captain of the Week, where a lucky youngster gets to go out on the field for the coin toss with the Saints, and we'll have a winner announce that for the Giants game next Monday night. We will take our final break, but there's still more to come. We'll go back to the casino and look ahead to Al, Frank, and Dan and Monday Night Football, so stay right where you are. When we return, final comments from the Grand Casino in Gulfport and a preview of tonight's Monday Night Football matchup. We've got time for one more visit from Ron Svoboda and the Saints fans slash coaches who are at the Grand Casino in Gulfport. We join Ron now for some final questions for the coach. Ron? <laughs> this has really been fun. Um, this has been enjoyable. I'm, I'm shocked. Uh, by the way, your, your question and your name. Uh, Daryl from Biloxi. I was wondering if you would consider using Tyrone Hughes at wide receiver the way Atlanta uses Deion Sanders to utilize his speed. No, we, we talked about it. We, we talked about it uh, when we were getting ready to draft him, you know, because he played wide receiver and a little defensive back at Nebraska. But we, uh, you know, going, when we drafted him and then brought him into training camp and what we've seen of him, we feel that his best position now and for the future is as a defensive back and not as a wide receiver. Not even a couple of plays thrown in there for the speed factor. Nope. Okay. <laughs> That's our commercial for Tyrone. Coach, um, to break with it, um, you know you're playing a team that runs the ball better than the Rams run the ball generally, um, and a team that's been more consistent than almost anybody in the NFL this year. What makes you feel like this week on a Monday night the Saints are going to play better against the Giants? Well, Ron, you know, I think every week that we're going to play good. You know, I, I go into every game optimistic that our team is going to play a heck of a ball game. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. But uh, I, I believe in these guys, and I believe in our coaches, and I believe in our team, and uh, I believe they're going to go out on Monday night and give, give a heck of an effort. Hey, I, I've never seen the Saints not try. I just wondered if there were any concrete things that you could put your finger on. Like what? That, that, that would make you believe that this week will be better than last. Well, in, so, in, in some areas, uh, in some areas, I don't know if we can do much worse. I mean, if, if we let, if we got to play the run better. I mean, we can't play it much worse than we played it last week. 
uh, hopefully we won't, you know, give them a, an easy touchdown where they pick up a, a fumble kickoff and run it in for a touchdown. I hope we'll do that better. So uh, in those areas, I hope we'll play better. And if we do and we play a little better in the other areas, then it should be a good ball game. Hey, Coach, as you know, we always root for that. And that'll do it from the Grand Casino. Thank you all. All right, Ron, we'll see you back next week. Now, coming up on, do you think he's going to be ready for next week against the Giants? I think he's got a chance, but I think right now that, that the chances are, oh, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not ready to say he's going to play. Okay. I'm not ready to say he's going to play either. I, I, it's going to be touch and go with Ronaldo. All right. Is he the only guy that was injured in the game Sunday that is possibly questionable or right. anything I, else? We've had a few other guys that got hurt, but I don't think it's anything that would keep them out of the game uh, Monday. All right, Brad, uh, we talked about Monday Night Football a little bit. Uh, you've got to feel pretty confident, though, with your performance mm -hmm. against the Rams, ready to get back on that field Monday night. Well, sure. You know, like I said, it was the first extended playing time I got, and uh, I hope... Uh, I did enough to keep to keep that coming along. And the Giants with a uh, Lawrence Taylor, uh, Jim talked about it. Be a be a big test for you. Yeah, yeah. I played with the Giants before, and uh, they're always a good physical team. And Coach Reeves uh, always has a good defensive uh, game plan, whether it be in Denver or now he's in right. New York. So uh, we'll, we have a work cut out for us. Brad, good luck against the uh, New York Giants on Monday Night Football. Jim, we'll see you back. Uh, we'll preview that game coming up on Monday night. That'll do it for this edition of the Jim Morris Show. We'll be back next Monday, as I said, a preview to the Monday night game between the Giants and the Saints. Look for us then. In the meantime, though, good night, everybody, and have a great week. The Jim Morris Show has been a presentation. WBUE presents the Jim Morris Show. Tonight's Jim Morris Show is brought to you in part by Louisiana Gas Service Company and by Rallies. Here comes the city! WBUE presents the Jim Mora Show. The Saints began the season with five straight wins. Included in that was a victory over the 49ers. And everybody, from the team owner on down, was enjoying the success. Meanwhile, the New York Giants were quietly on their way to becoming the league's most consistent team. And last week, they beat the Indianapolis Colts to go to 10 and three on the year, becoming the first team to clinch a playoff spot. The Saints enter this Monday night game seven and six, needing a win to stay alive for the playoffs. The Saints defense has had trouble stopping the run. They gave up 212 yards to Rams rookie Jerome Bettis last week. The Giants are the NFL's top rushing team, and they're on a five-game win streak as they come into the Superdome tonight. The Saints must stop the run and the Giants to keep playoff hopes alive. The stage is set. The Giants and Saints on Monday Night Football. Thank you very much, and welcome to the show. The Saints, a chance to show a nationwide audience they are still alive. Since the game is just about an hour away, portions of tonight's show were taped to allow the coach to be at the Superdome for the game. We thought that would be a good idea. So let's get things going tonight and start talking about Monday Night Football. Here's the coach of the New Orleans Saints, Jim Mora. Hey, Jim. How are you? Jim, the game. Uh, let's first of all just talk a little bit about the Giants, the importance of this game as we near the end of the regular season. Well, I think any time that you get to this point in the season and uh, the games take on more meaning because they, they have more meaning, you know, there's more involved uh, in the outcome whether you win or lose. And uh, this is uh, certainly the case tonight uh, when we play the Giants. Yeah, it is Monday Night Football. The Saints uh, need a win. Has the mood at David Drive this week changed at all or is it the same? Uh, is there an added sense more than usual about winning this football game? Well, we've had a good week of practice, a real good week of practice. And uh, I think the guys are, uh, are ready to go and uh, I think they'll play good. All right, time now for our first break, Jim, but don't go anywhere, people. We'll look at what the Saints will face on Monday night when we come back. Coming up next on the Jim Mora Show, we'll break down the Giants' film. That's next. Well, as we have already pointed out, the Giants have the best record of any team in the NFL right now with an awesome running game. 
And that's where we'll start our breakdown tonight with the Giants offense. Jim, Coach Dan Reeves has some very good backs. Uh, Rodney Hampton, Jared Bunch, Dave Meggett. There they are. Let's look at Hampton first, though. Injured for part of the year, but he's back. And he leads the team with 860 yards. Right. He's got over 800 yards. He's a great back. He's got it all. He's got size. He's got speed. He's got the, the, the elusiveness and the cutting ability. Good receiver. You know, he's uh, an outstanding back. Also, there's Lewis Tillman. He's second with 573 yards. We'll see Tillman coming up right here. All right, Tillman, number 34 out of Jackson State. Uh, been with the Giants for a few years. He's not as big as, uh, as uh, Hampton, but he's still an excellent back. And, the and passing, there he is again. Yeah, right. scoring a touchdown here. Now, the passing good. attack, Jim, uh, led by Phil Simms, the 30-something quarterback, having a good year, 2,400 yards on the season right. so far. Well, Phil, you know, he's been around a long time, and he's won a lot of big games, a lot of games for the Giants, been to Super Bowls, and... Uh, He's just an outstanding player, and uh, they've got a you know a, a pretty simp simple, I say, simple conservative offense. They run the ball and 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 throw it uh, efficiently, and they got a great offensive line. You yeah. know, people don't talk about their offensive line. Their offensive line is. And this guy's a good player, number 87, Cross. They're tight right. end, an outstanding player. How across the tight end? Right. Now uh, to the other side of the ball, the Giants have a pretty good defense. Not bad at all there either. They're number one in the NFL in points allowed. Uh, they've given up the least amount of points to date. Uh, they get to Steve DeBerg here with the Dolphins. Good pass rush. Well, yeah, the, you know, points allowed is the, is the most important stat uh, defensively, and they've only given up 158, which, uh, as you said, is number one. Very sound, very solid, uh, tough defense. So, you know, we've got our hands full. they got some good linebackers. Carlton Bailey leads the team. Michael Brooks. And there's another one here, Corey Miller, who's playing pretty well. All right, that's Corey Miller there, number 57. Michael Brooks out of LSU will not play because he's got a sprained foot. Right. Uh, Carlton Bailey uh, is a good inside linebacker for him. Uh, came over with in free agency from uh, Buffalo. So uh, defensive backs are good. Uh, that's uh, Mark Collins there getting an interception, number 25 against the Rams. So they got a good, good overall defense. Yeah, Collins has three interceptions. Uh, Greg Jackson from LSU has three as well. Jim, what do you think? Are there similarities between the way the Giants do things and the way the Saints do things? Not recently. <laughs> <laughs> Not recently. Uh, I understand your point, but right. I, in, uh, in terms of, uh, of maybe philosophy or, or offensive philosophy, good defense, are there similarities between the two teams in that aspect? Well, I think a lot of people, you know, uh, philosophy is, is I, think, I think your philosophy has to do with who, who, what you got. I, I think you adjust your philosophy to the type of players you have, and, right. I, and I think they've done a good job of this, and, you know, uh, I think we do a good job of that, too. All right, this week there is no turning point since the game is yet to be played. That goes for the other side as well. Can't exactly hear what the Giants said about the game before the game. So that will return next week. Time for a break now, but on the other side of it, we'll get our first questions for the coach from the Grand Casino. We'll be back. When we return, we'll visit fans in the stands as the Jim Morris Show presents Hey Coach. We have returned, but now let's switch locations and go out via satellite to the beautiful Grand Casino in Gulfport, Mississippi, where we join Ron Swoboda. Ron, what's going on out there? Well, I'll tell you what, a little thin here on a Thursday night. Maybe it's uh, no game yet and uh, that to come this evening, but uh, we do have some people with some questions. Your name and your question. Uh, Robert Shepard, Las Vegas. Um, I was wondering, uh, Coach Moore, if you could tell me if there's any validity in, on of the ES ESPN's um, rumor that they picked up about you going to Jacksonville and, and doing some coaching. Well, I, I just hope I'm here next year, you know. Uh, no, there's no rumor, unless it's Jacksonville High School or something like that. I, I, I don't know. No, I, I'm not going anywhere, hopefully. I don't Coach, plan to on my, in my accord. Uh, Coach, I know you got a couple of years left on your contract. When I talked to Tom Benson the other day, he seemed to lump your future in with that whole general manager's decision all around a, um, a gathering at the end of the season when they would uh, uh, appraise everything with the team. Uh, did you want more uh, uh, of a vote of confidence, more of a vote of confidence than that? I don't think I need a vote of confidence, uh, Ron. Uh, uh, Tom Benson and I talk almost daily, and, and we've discussed uh, my future uh, as we have, you know, at other times uh, w with the Saints, so I don't, I don't feel that I need a, a public vote of confidence from Tom. So privately, it was a lot stronger than what Tom said to us uh, publicly. 
Well, I don't know what he said to you, <laughs> so well, I can't say. He basically said he was going to uh, appraise your situation at the end of the year just like he would this potential general manager or not. And that's well, I think essentially that's what probably came what, what he does every year with what, what we all do. You know, at the end of the yeah. season, you kind of sit back and evaluate how things are going and what you need to do to get better. Okay. We do have another lady and a question. Ma'am, your name and your question? Well, my question is since um, none of the, the, the coaching staff has played in an NFL game, does that affect the decisions that are made during the game? No, not at all. Has nothing to do with it. Okay, Lionel and Jim, uh, that's it from the Grand Casino. We'll be back with more questions in just a little bit. All right, Ryan, we'll see you then. Now, our cameras were out this week around the city to catch up with some fans who are looking to quiz the coach. We, of course, call it Hey Coach, and let's hear our first question now. Hey Coach, Kevin Sanders, home of Louisiana. Uh, I'm just wondering, with the personnel that we've gotten back, Sam Mills, Les Miller, why do you feel like teams are having success still running up the middle? Well, we've still got some guys that are out and I'm not using that as an excuse. Um, like last week, you know, Vaughn didn't play. Frank Warren's been out for a while and uh, is uh, going to be out for the rest of the season. I don't think Sam's still 100%. In fact, I know he isn't. He's a long way from being 100%, although he's playing now. Um, and we're just not playing very good. And, uh, we're, our run defense just isn't like it has been in the past, and uh, we're just going to have to get it better. All right, let's get to another question for the coach. Hey, coach. My name is Larry Sandoff of Parodies, Louisiana. I would like to know, what does it take for you to make a quarterback change? Well, it takes uh, a decision on my part and our, on our offensive staff's part to feel that the quarterback we put in there will do better than the one that uh, we have in there at the moment. And up to this point, we don't feel that way. All right, our final question on Hey Coach. Hey coach, my name is Natalie. I work for Hooters Restaurant. What I'd like to know is, what is the difference between the preparation for a Monday night game and a Sunday day game? There is no different preparation. Our preparation is exactly the same. The only thing is you have one day longer prior to the Monday night game than you do for the Sunday game. So you either use it as an extra time to prepare or maybe a little bit extra rest time. All right, more questions later, including the ever-popular Michael A. Bear armchair quarterback segment. But first, let's do the coach's handbook. This week, Brian Grenrude sat down with Jim Mora, the Saints defensive backs coach, and they talked about dogs. When you talk about blitzing, most people think of linebackers, but defensive backs are also involved in this. Joining us this week on Coach's Handbook is defensive backs coach Jim Mora to talk about what's called the zone dog. All right, Coach, explain to me exactly what is a zone dog. Well, Brian, a zone dog is something that we've designed to try and get pressure on the quarterback coming from places that he wouldn't normally expect it and still be relatively sound in a zone coverage behind it. And that's something that uh, a lot of teams do, and we do pretty well here. Now, we have a good example of that on the screen? Right, right. On, on the screen here, we've got a shot from the Houston game. As you notice, we're going to be playing here with six defensive backs in our dime scheme, and our nickel and our dime, Vince Buck and Toy Cook, are going to what the fan would re to refer to as blitz off the corner. At the same time, I want you to notice Wayne Martin and Pig Goff stepping towards the guards here and then dropping in the zone coverage. Okay, normally, the four down guys are going to be the rushers, but here you get a good shot of Wayne and Pig dropping off into zone coverage, and what they're doing is they're occupying the guards. You see the guards have to hold on them because they're normally responsible for blocking them. That allows Toy time to get around the corner. The other thing that's good here is is uh, Vaughn Johnson steps in and occupies the center so he can't get off. Okay, and what ends up happening is we end up with the guy free to the quarterback. Okay, we end up with a two deep zone behind it. Okay, four underneath, and a free shot on Warren Moon for a sack. And this is commonly what we, we refer to as a zone dog. And as you can see, these two inside guys here are doing an excellent job of occupying the guards to give the defensive back a chance to get a sack here. Now, if the DB does not get to the quarterback, does that leave any holes in the secondary? Not really. Not really, because we're playing a zone defense behind it, and we should be pretty sound as long as we're playing our zones correctly. So it's, it's a calculated uh, blitz, all right, 
but you're not leaving yourself exposed if you don't get there in time to sack the quarterback. So it's a pretty sound defense, and it's a good way to get pressure on the quarterback. Great. Thanks a lot, Coach. We appreciate it. My pleasure. We'll see you next week on Coach's Handbook. All right, Brian, stay tuned. We'll bring out our player guest next, Tommy Barnhart. That and a lot more coming up right after this. Coming up next on The Jim Mora Show, we'll introduce you to some sensational dancers. They're next. Our guest tonight is a very special player. He plays on special teams, holding the ball for kicker Morton Anderson and also punting the football. Let's welcome to the show number six, Tommy Barnhart. Tommy. Tommy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Lionel. All right, first off, this game on Monday Night Football, uh, everyone knows how important it is. What is the feeling amongst the players as you get ready for this one? Well, I think there's, uh, everybody knows that it's a very important game for us and uh, to try to turn things around a little bit. Uh, I think that that's uh, one of the main things that everybody's focused on and everybody's preparing themselves really hard and uh, getting ready to uh, play this big game. You're having a good year, averaging uh, over 43 yards a punt, but also getting the ball down inside the 20-yard line. That is very important because field position is critical. Yeah, and it also, I think that uh, it, it helps our defense out quite a bit, I know. And that's the main thing I like to do is, is put it down in there inside the 10 or inside the 20 one because I know that uh, our defense can turn their ears back and just go right after them. And most of the time when that happens, I feel like that the defense will hold them three times and uh, they'll be out and punt and we'll get the ball on the plus side of the 50. Right. Now, is that one of the toughest things you have to do, Tommy, is uh, when you... As a kicker, do you want to, I guess you kind of feel like you want to kick it as hard as you can, but in that situation, you got to kind of hold back on it a little bit. Well, I don't necessarily think you have to hold back line. I think most of my punts, I try to have the trajectory of the ball going out at about a 45 degree angle, whereas right. punting inside the 10, it's more or less kicking straight up right. in the air. And it's something that you have to work with off and on, and that's one of the emphasis I put a lot on during training camp this year, and I felt like that area of my game had fallen a little bit. And I just feel that uh, it helps the team out tremendously with the defense that we have. Now, when you get the ball down inside the 20, it helps out some other people as well. Why don't you explain that a little bit? Yes, Lionel. We, I've started a program called Tommy's Dream Kicks that it goes to uh, the Child's Wish Foundation for kids that are terminally ill that are granted a, a wish to whatever they would like to do. And what I have done is by starting this program, from, for every punt that's from the 20 to the 10-yard line, I donate $100 to the Child's Wish Foundation. And from the 10, to the goal line, I donate 200 bucks to right. the Child's Wish Foundation. And we've also got Continental Airlines to step in and donate one free round trip ticket for every punt down inside the 20 or the 10. So it goes to help a, uh, a very good cause. And, you know, there's not only there, the kids are benefiting from it, what, but the team is benefiting from it also. And it uh, goes to help everyone. Yeah, that goes along with uh, Morton Anderson's Kicks for Kids as well. That's great. The Saints uh, will face a good punt returner in Dave Meggett. He hasn't popped one this year, but he is dangerous. Talk about him a little bit, Tom. Well, yes, Dave Meggett is a, a very good punt returner, and, and we like to classify him, or I like to look at him as something like a Medcalf. And yeah. I think when we have good punt returners, I kind of like that because it's kind of a, a challenge for not only myself, but it's also a good challenge for the punt team. The guys that are uh, up front been coveraging for me, and along with the forcers out there wide, uh, those guys have been doing a very good job. And, that's, you know, I like to help those guys out because I have to get good hang time on it and try right. to get the yardage and not outkick the coverage. Now, aside from punting the ball, you're also a part of uh, the field goal team, a major part. You hold for kicker Morton Anderson. I, I would think that when Morton is lining up for a last second field goal, there's just as much pressure on you as there is on him. Yeah, and the thing about it is, is it happens so quick that people don't realize that. I think it's like 0.4 or 0.5 seconds, and it's something I think that you have to take a lot of pride in because it can win ball games and it can lose ball games. And the thing about it is, Morton's a, a very hard kicker to work for because he wants those strings perfect in front every single time, and not all the time the snapper will snap them right to me. So right. I think that, you know, when it's last second situations like that to win a game like the 49er game or whatever, you know, we take a lot of pride in to saying, hey, the offense is going to get the ball down here. We want the opportunity to go out to, to have a chance to kick the field goal to win the game. But it doesn't get off the ground if, uh, if everybody, the, the snapper, the holder, and the kicker do his job. Right, exactly. Tommy, what, do you guys uh, talk at all before a field goal when Morton's going out there, or have you worked that all out in practice? Is it basically now just 
mechanics. You, you guys know exactly what to yeah, do. Yeah, it's more or less just the operation and the mechanics. I mean, Morton knows what he has to do. I know what I have to do. Joel Hilgenberg, the snapper, knows what he has to do. And he, he'll, we'll be on the sidelines and he'll hit a few into the net and then he goes off down the other end right. of the sidelines and he uh, does what he has to do. He gets ready and, you know, we signal, uh, Coach Moore here says kick a field goal, so we're out and ready to go and everything's on automatic. And we go out and set up and do our routine and go through it and catch it. It's a tension filled business, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, but you try. You don't <laughs> focus on those aspects. Right. The main thing is you focus on what you want to do, and that's catch the ball, set it up perfect, because I feel like that if I get the ball set up perfect with the laces in front, he'll make it. All right, Tommy, we'll get back and talk with you a little bit later. As every player guest does, Tommy Barnhart will receive a gift certificate from Oakland Heart Jewelers located on Metairie Road. It is snapshot time, and this week we do our annual look at the Saints dance team, the Saints Saisons. Jim Gallagher has the pleasure of bringing you this story. For the last seven years, the Saints Stations have been entertaining fans on the sidelines every Sunday. In that time, a lot of girls have come and gone, but six remain from the original 1987 squad. Lena Nuccio, Lori Carroll, Rhonda Hemelt, Jane Phillips, Angie Wagasback, and Missy Zeno. We weren't even known back in 87 to our popularity now. We're known worldwide from being able to travel to London and the Tokyo and doing all the traveling that we've done throughout the state of Louisiana and the Gulf Coast, promoting our dance team. I think it really started, the, the word of the St. Stations really started traveling when we got our trading cards. Once we started that, we started receiving trading cards from all over the place. Hawaii, Alaska, Canada, sign them and return them. We had a week before the first game. Our costumes were not ready. We were panicking. We had to get our fringe sewed on our costume just handle the whole uniform ourselves because we had to be prepared for the first game. We would perform somewhere and people would say, oh, y'all are so cute. What high school are you from? And we'd say, well, yeah, we dance in the same stations. And then I remember one occasion we were, um, I'm not sure what function it was, and um, Martin Anderson was there and somebody said, oh, you know, these girls are the same stations. And he said, what's the same station? Nowadays, it's hard to find a Saints fan who hasn't heard of the Saints stations. They've traveled abroad to both American Bowls, they've been featured in their own calendar, and last year they achieved national recognition with their own line of trading cards. Now we are recognized all over the state, probably all over the United States. Um, our trading cards, we were picked as one of the top four teams to make trading cards last year. That did a lot to promote our popularity throughout the league. I think none of us really expected us to have our own trading cards or even the calendar. We didn't really expect it. We were just in it for one thing. We, we wanted to dance and the Saints was our team and we wanted to perform for the Saints fans. They've certainly come a long way and naturally the original six have led the way for the other girls. Back in 87, the time and the dedication that we had to put into becoming a member of the Saints team, the countless hours that we spent in the community, all for charity, not getting paid. And, and if you want to know true dedication, you look at the six of us, and we really define that word. We've been here since day one, and uh, we kind of feel like we've been maybe the backbone of helping the uh, team grow and helping uh, the new girls as they come in and stuff. So yes, there's a special bond there between all of us. Seven years is a long time to be doing anything, but the question still remains. And how long do you do this though? I mean, you've been at it for seven years now. It completes me as a person. I think um, when I think of a sensation, I want to see my picture in the dictionary of the, you know, a sensation. And um, it's just Everything that makes me happy is compiled in being a Saint Asian. I think they'll have to run me off, actually. <laughs> I'm here for the duration. When people ask me what I do or whatever, and I use, if I do say that I dance for the Saints, I don't even say I'm a Saint Asian, I say I dance for the Saints. And I'm surprised how many people now say, oh, you're a Saint Asian. It's like, yeah, that's what I am. For the Jim Mora Show, I'm Jim Gallagher. Up next is the Michael A. Bear armchair quarterback segment. Our studio audience gets their chance. We'll be back with that right after this. When we come back, Ron and guests talk to the coach from the Grand Casino in Gulfport.
Well, let's go back now to the Grand Casino in Gulfport, Mississippi for more with the Gulf Coast Saints fans, and they are with Ron Swoboda. Ron? Thank you, Lionel, very much. And while the customers try their luck at the slot machines here at the Grand Casino, we'll try our luck with a couple more questions. Your name and your question. Brian McQuarrie, Long Beach, Mississippi. I'd like to know that if, if uh, Wade Wilson got hurt, and hurt for the long term, would you be going with Mike Buck or would you begin to develop Steve Walsh as a long-term solution to the Saints offensive problems? Mike Buck is our backup quarterback. Okay. He's our number two quarterback. So if something happened to Wade, uh, Mike would be the uh, guy that would go in for him and play. In a game, Coach, would that be the long-term solution? Well, you never also? know. Right, you know, it, it would depend upon how Mike did. If Mike did well, yeah, if he didn't do well, then we'd have to give Steve a try. But I hear you. Thank you, Coach. And uh, your name and your question? Hey, Coach. Dave Langdon, Long Beach, Mississippi. And I was wondering if you had any special plans to shore up the defense to stop the Giants' rushing game, which is probably better than the Rams' rushing game. We have some plans, right? We have some things that we're going to do in the game to uh, that we hope will work, and um, we'll see what happens Monday night. Coach, of course, everybody wants to talk about the. Uh, rushing game of the Giants and whatnot. We, we haven't seen a whole lot of the Giants' defense. Its numbers look pretty good against the schedule they've played so far. Would you talk, minus Lawrence Taylor, they've done a pretty good job. Would you talk about some of the key people there and what they try to do on defense? Now, you said minus Lawrence Taylor? Uh, I mean, he's, he's not been as big a factor as he's been before. Oh, I, I, he's playing for him. He's a starter. Yeah. yeah, he's a starter for him. And yeah. uh, so they do have him. And uh, But they've got some good players over there, and they've got a good scheme, and they're playing very well. They've given up the fewest number of points in the National Football League, 158, and that's very commendable. So, you know, it's an outstanding defense. Okay, Coach. That's a good one, and um, we'll be back with one more shot from the Grand Casino. Y'all take care. All right, Ron. We'll see you then. <laughs> Time now to hear from our studio audience. Every week they get their chance to ask Jim Moore a question in the Michael A. Bear armchair quarterback segment. Without further delay, let's hear the voices of the people out there and get to our first question. Coach, uh, Andy Lorio from Metairie. What is the st status of Derek Brown for uh, Monday night? I think Derek Brown's going to be able to play Monday night. He's uh, practiced... Uh, all week and he's looking good in practice and I think he'll be ready. I'm Gwen Patterson from Marrero. What differences would you say there are in the Giants under Dan Rees as the coach as compared to when either Hanley or Parcells was coaching the team? Well we didn't play him when Hanley was coaching so I didn't really get a chance to study mm -hmm. him. Uh, we played him a couple times when Bill Parcells was the head coach there and, and they're very similar right now. You know, they've always been a team that has liked to run the football and run it well. They've got an outstanding line, offensive line, and always had good backs. They did that with Parcells. They did it with Hanley. They were, they were one of the top rushing teams in the league the last few years under Ray Hanley, and they're doing it now. They're just the difference between now and Hanley is they're winning games. Coach, Sam McCotch from Chalmette. Have you done anything different this week in practice that you have done previously? Not really. You know, we usually go out each week with, with the same approach as far as, you know, we've, over the long haul, our, our coaching career and all, you know, we, we have a, a, a system, a way that we feel like to get the most done during practice is how to organize our practice time and our meeting time and what we have to do as far as getting the guys ready. And, and we usually do pretty much the same routine every week. I'm Sharon Dunn. I'm from LG. Is my question is for Tommy. Uh, Tommy, if since you're a right-footed kicker, have you considered angling the ball more to the left when you kick it so it'll go out of bounds around the 10 or so instead of kicking it straight on to the end zone? Yeah, that's been a thought over the past couple of years and when we first, when I first started putting the, the uh, plan together, putting the ball out inside the 20 or even inside the 10. But the thing there is sometimes you kind of get a bad spot from the officials over there. They have a rough time spotting it from where I kicked it from actually where it goes out of bounds. So the thing about it is, is I feel more comfortable going down the middle of the field because one, I can't control the ball to kick sideways or kick back to me, and therefore it gives our forces a chance to get down there and make plays. I'm Andrew Skiro from Kenner. Uh, there's been some talk about the possibility of hiring a new general manager, and I'm wondering if the Saints decide to look outside of the organization. Who would be some of your cho choices, Coach Moore? I really, it's not my decision to make, and uh, I, I really, wouldn't want to get into that at this point. I don't know if we're going to hire one or, or we're not or who it would be or who the candidates are. So 
I'm sorry I can't answer your question, but I just don't feel it would be appropriate for me to even speculate on who it might be at this time. All right, thank you very much, audience, for the questions tonight. Now let's give away a new Benchcraft recliner from Michael A. Bear's Furniture. Tommy, uh, be so kind to dig in here and pull a name, a winner out of mm. there. Rayann Smith. <laughs> Rayann right. Smith. She's the winner tonight. I'm very excited. <laughs> Very excited to have the new Benchcraft recliner. What's her question, Tom? What is the single most important factor the Saints need to get back into the playoff track or onto the playoff track? Who hmm. do you want to answer that, Tommy or me? <laughs> How about Tommy? Well, I, th I think the, the, the main thing is I think we're still on track for the playoffs. I think uh, we need to, you know, we've got to win the, the last three ball games, and that's the thing about it is I think we, we just got to buckle down and say, hey, we're going to do this and nobody's going to stop us. Nobody's going to deny us of winning these three ball games, and everybody's going to pull together like we always do and just get in there and fight our rear ends off and, you know, and things will turn out for the best. That's exactly what I would have said. <laughs> <laughs> Score more points, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, congratulations. Enjoy the new Benchcraft recliner from Michael A. Bear's Furniture. We are going away again, but not for long. Come back with us because we'll get the Monday Night Football announcer's views on the Saints, so stay tuned for that. Coming up next on the Jim Mora Show, we'll go one-on-one -on -one with Giants head coach Dan Reeves and get his thoughts on tonight's game. That's next. Welcome back. Now, tonight's game will be called by the Monday Night Football triumvirate of Frank Gifford, Dan Deerdorf, and Al Michaels. This week on What I Say, Jim Gallagher found out what they are saying about the Saints. Al Michaels and Dan Deerdorf are two-thirds of one of football's most successful broadcast teams. They're in town with the rest of ABC's Monday Night Crew to broadcast tonight's game. We caught up with Al and Dan last month before the Saints' first Monday Night game in San Francisco, and we asked their views on the Saints. Uh, they're one of our staples on, uh, on Monday night. They've got a big following around the country. Uh, consistently, uh, since Jim Moore got there, a, a winning season. And uh, I, it's good for about five pounds every time I visit New Orleans. It's uh, one of my favorites. If you find a bad meal there, you let me know. Oh, I've, and I'm looking, but I've never, <laughs> I've never found one yet. We always have a lot of fun when we go to New Orleans. I know that it's one of our uh, favorite uh, places to visit. And uh, we're real happy when we see one or two games on the schedule every year for Monday Night Football because the town really gets revved up for it. The Superdome is a great place to do a Monday night game, and uh, we like the Saints whether it's on the, on the road or at home, but in particular in New Orleans. Well, the ABC crew does more than just eat its way through town. They also meet before the game with key players and staff members of each team. And, of course, they also sit down with the head coach. Jim is the kind of guy who uh, is, is extremely intelligent and is very forthright. And if you ask him the right questions and you've done your homework, he gives you the answers that you need. And I think he appreciates the fact that you've done uh, your work uh, in terms of what it is that you need to know, that you're on top of what the situation is with New Orleans as best you can be without talking to him. And so by the time we get to Jim and his staff, they know that we've done our work preparatory to, to visiting with them, and we don't ask them to go back to square one or any of that stuff. I think Jim's uh, uh, as relaxed with us as he can be with, with members of the media. Uh, uh, we've known him for years. Uh, he knows he can trust us. He knows he can talk to us off the record about different things and he'll never end up on the air. So uh, we've worked hard to maintain and earn that trust and uh, I, I, I enjoy his company. I, you know, all I, all I think back to is when I was a player and I always ask myself the question, would I have enjoyed playing for this guy? And I would have liked playing for Jim Mora. For the Jim Mora Show, I'm Jim Gallagher. Jim, when you sit down with the ABC commentators before the game, what, basically do they just want to know what players to look for? What do they ask you when they sit down in those meetings? Well, first of all, they want to know uh, who's, who's, you know, who's going to be playing in the game and who's not, if there's any changes in our lineup. Right. Like I'll meet with them, I, I met with them Sunday night, and then they'll, they'll ask how certain guys are doing, 
you know, if, if, if what we feel we have to do to, to win the game offensively and defensively. Um, and that's basically it. You know, they just, we kind of shoot the breeze back and forth. Yeah. Just How long do you sit down with me? About a half an hour. Half an hour. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll see what happens Monday night. Let's take this time now to announce our Saints Away tailgate party, though. The lucky winners in this contest get to watch the Saints-Eagles game December 26th in a fully catered suite in the L.A. Superdome. It's all part of our contest sponsored by WVUE Sports, your local Dodge dealers, and Saints Digest. The following winners get the sweet treatment. They are Timmy Coleman of New Orleans, Debbie Domang of West Wego, Louisiana, George Constantine of Metairie, and Willie Hunter of New Orleans. Now, winning in this contest is simple. All you have to do is go to any Dodge dealer in the New Orleans area, drop your name in the basket, and you're registered. And at the end of the year, we'll award the grand prize, a brand new Dodge Ram truck. Now, we talked with Giants head coach Dan Reeves earlier in the week. Reeves said his team will be fired up because they're playing for the home field advantage in the playoffs. He also said a lot more, as we'll hear now in the coach's corner. Dan, first of all, welcome to the show. Uh, your team is 10-3, and three, already in the playoffs. What has been the one thing that has got the Giants going this year, the main reason for your success already? Well, uh, there's a lot of reasons, and uh, I guess uh, the biggest thing, though, is this group has played really well together as a, as a team. We've uh, had them playing hard. They've really done a great job uh, week in and week in out of playing hard. And, you know, we haven't made the mistakes, I think, that really cost you ball games. If we can keep from turning it over, we think we have a realistic chance of winning every game. Dan, do you see a lot of similarities between maybe the Saints and the Giants? Nothing spectacular, no real big superstars, just steady, consistent play? Well, I think that's very true. Uh, you know, you try to get your team prepared each week. Uh, you know, we try to get them to play hard, and they've asked, uh, they've done everything we've asked of them. And I think that's true of, uh, of teams like ourselves and the Saints. They just go out and play hard each week. Dan, looking at the Saints, what do you think the difference is from early on when the team went 5-0 and to now when they're having a little bit of trouble? Well, I think like most teams, and we're struggling a little bit in the same areas, when you lose, uh, you know, some players from... Uh, starters uh, at some positions it hurts you a little bit more than others you may not have depth at those positions you know if they could stay healthy then I don't think you'd see the the problems that they've had over the last few weeks they haven't been able to make the plays that that win ball games they've uh, missed some plays that other teams have made that you know have won games uh, against them so I think just the little things and having some injuries certainly doesn't help yeah, Dan, on the defense, for sure, uh, you know what kind of player Sam Mills is. Do you think missing him for a lot of the season has hurt that defense? Well, I know even last week uh, with Vaughn uh, being out there and uh, Sam just coming back, uh, you know, Turnbull going out uh, certainly helped uh, a great deal. The Rams' ability to run the ball was increased a great deal when you get some of those guys out of the lineup. And, you know, I think uh, when you have a leader like Sam, it's not only just the, uh, the play on the field, it's the intangible things that you miss, the leadership and those types of things that, uh, you know, as ball games are won really on a play here and a play there, and your starters, those guys that are superstars are the ones that usually make those plays. And speaking of the running game, your team very successful, number one. Uh, is that what you want to do, come into the Superdome Monday night, try to run the football against the Saints? Well, I think for us to be successful against anyone, we have to run the ball. I don't know that we uh, have the ability to where we're going to have to throw the ball against someone. I know that uh, we're a much better offensive team if we can uh, threaten you with the running game and set up some of the things that we would like to do and get ourselves in uh, third down and short situations rather than third and long. So that's our, you know, that's our plan uh, each week and certainly going in against the Saints who are an extremely good defensive team. That's got to be our plan. Last question, Dan. The Saints still alive for the playoffs. You expecting a tough one on Monday Night Football? Well, I don't think there's any question uh, we're coming against a team that uh, has a tremendous amount of pride. They've been in the playoffs the last three years. They have their backs to the wall. They want to be one of the teams to get in the playoffs because once you get there, anything can happen. And uh, we know that we're going to be in for an extremely tough football game on Monday night. Dan Reeves, head coach of the Giants, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks, Lionel. All right, let's announce our Harburnia Junior Captain of the Week now. He's Jeffrey Lehman, and Jeffrey will walk to midfield with the Saints for the coin toss on Monday night, and that should be a thrill for him. Let's take our last trip out to Gulfport now and join Ron Sabota for some final thoughts and questions from the entertainment mecca of the South, oh, yeah. the Grand Casino. Ron? Can you hear those winners in the background? Okay, we got a couple of questions. Your name and your question. Joanne Dominey, Gulfport, Mississippi. 
since the giants are statistically the best running team we have and they're not shabby on passing what kind of problem is this going to present us come monday night well it's going to present a, a number of problems and uh we've been addressing these problems all week and hopefully we've got some answers for those problems and some solutions uh, because it's going to be a, a heck of a challenge for our defense a uh, coach in this rough period over the last eight games or so you've staunchly resisted change you've stayed with your system you've stayed with your quarterback and of course the town has been screaming for some kind of change and you've stayed with that you've stayed the course um, against all of this uh, with that statement are you saying you believe your system is solid and it's the people who have failed to execute it no I, I, I well yeah I believe our system is solid I believe in our system in our in our philosophy in the way that we do things because it's brought so much success to uh, not only this teams but other teams that I've been involved with and, and we've we've had uh, good records and, and won games and, and won a lot of games with with the way that we do things so and and the players that we have on our team so we're gonna stay with the players and with the system I believe in both of them very strongly okay coach but you understand what I'm saying I mean when you lose what six out of your last eight that does say that something is wrong uh, I hope in all that you can understand uh, how the fans might get a little upset about that and want change even though as a as the expert here you might know that the system is solid and uh, and maybe there needs to be different players down the road well I, we I consider the players as part of the system uh, we have a philosophy as to who we play and, and why we play them and who we keep and who we don't keep. So that's all part of the system. And as I say, we believe very strongly in it because of the success that we have had with it. Okay, okay Coach, the best of luck tonight against the Giants. All right, Ron, we'll see you again next week. Now, that is it for the tape part of the show, Jim. Uh, you're free to go. I know you have some business to do against the Giants. Good luck to you. Uh, Tommy Barnhart, same to you, and thanks for coming down. We'll take a break right now, but when we come back, we'll go live to the field of the Superdome where kickoff is just minutes away. More coming up right after this. Coming up next on the Jim Mora Show, we'll go live to the Superdome floor and update you on the Saints and the Giants kickoff, which is next. Well, the taped version of the show is over. We are live now, just a few minutes from kickoff between the Saints and the New York Giants on Monday Night Football. For more on the game, let's head to the floor of the Superdome live right now and Jim Gallagher. Jim, what's the mood right now on the field? Well, Lionel, thank you very much. The mood's pretty positive right now. They are, of course, doing the national anthem behind me. But when the Saints were warming up beforehand, kind of curious. I expected to see some bags, expected to hear a lot of booing. But mostly it was a very positive crowd. I think the fans here are very upbeat about the game. Of course, the Saints themselves are very upbeat about this game because they realize one thing. This is a must-win game. Uh, you know, we have a lot to prove this week. Uh not only to ourselves, but to the fans, and uh, we know we're just going to go out there and play hard. Unfortunately, two wins in eight games by the Saints hasn't inspired a lot of confidence. The baghead started to appear last week, and more will probably be in the stands tonight. But as they say, winning can cure everything. We can't worry about what someone is saying about it. If they wear bags over their head, you know, you know they can do whatever they want to do. Well, I think them realizing it's a Monday Night Football game will be very exciting. I think it's going to be a, a packed stadium, I mean, they're, they're going to be behind us 100% to get us on the winning track again. If the playoffs began tonight, the Saints would be one of three NFC Wild Card teams. But with only three games left, this team can't afford any more losses. It is really now or never, uh, but, uh, you know, you never know what could happen. If we lost the game, we could still get into the playoffs. But, you know, we, we have to approach this game that, you know, to get into the playoffs, we have to win this one. This one's going to be a big one for us. Zoom out to me, all right? Hey, guys, you know what I've got right here? When we talked earlier about the bags and what the fans and you thought what they might be talking about would be a negative reaction, but it's actually been a pretty positive reaction. And I think one reason is because there are 10,000 of these out there. These are Ricky Jackson signs that were distributed by a local radio station. And the whole idea is to honor Ricky Jackson for 13 years of great service to the Saints. And they've been pretty positive about it. Right now, the Giants are coming on the field and I hear a chorus of boos. The Saints will be coming out in just a second. And I expect a very positive reaction tonight. 
why don't I also expect a very positive game from the Saints? They've had more than a week to prepare. Normally, Jim Mora teams are very positive. They have good games on Monday night football, close games on Monday night football, with the exception of the San Francisco game. And as you've heard from those players, they were embarrassed in San Francisco. They want to make up, and tonight will be their shot. So expect a good performance from the Saints tonight. I expect a very close game. Reporting live from the Louisiana Superdome, this is Jim Gallagher. Lionel, back to you. All right, Jim. Thank you. I feel the season is riding on this game. If the Saints win it, they'll go on to turn it around and make the playoffs. If they lose this one, I believe you can kiss it goodbye. It's over. The Saints know this. That's why I'm picking them to win this game. We'll find out right here on Channel 8. Coming up next, the Saints and the Giants. Watch News 8 after the game for the highlights and live locker room interviews. For now, we'll see you later. Good night, everybody.